Mike Markham. Most know the fascinating unsolved time traveler story up to a certain point. However, what I'm about to share with you here today is what you don't know and what you can't find anywhere else. And up to date, only I and Art Bell are revealing. Welcome to Soul Spy University, where your souls can run free and your minds are free to expand. For you to keep enjoying this adult Disneyland, we would love it if you can give our content a like as well as subscribe so we're not completely lost on you in the atmosphere, as well as share to help expand the minds of others. All right, Tommy, I don't even know where to begin um, with this, but I'm gonna summarize for the audience so they know the basics of the story, and then I'm gonna tell them something that no other source is telling them about this unsolved mystery. Many are reporting on the main story, which I told you I will be filling you in on here in a second. Um, but according, I researched upon way further research and um, dug up an Art Bell interview um, that says so much more that is mind blowing. And, and it's up to you to figure out from here, but there's a whole other 75% of the story that no one knows about the conclusion. Okay, hi, Tommy. Mike Mark Hello. was a time traveler. Okay, well, basically what he was, he was, you know, he was in his 20s. And like most people in his 20s, he was trying to build a time machine. Well, okay. he was so dedicated. He was so dedicated that he actually ended up stealing transformers <laughs> and knocking out 75 percent of the power grid in his uh, town <laughs> so oh, yes um he was on coast to coast back in i think it was 1995 um and swore he would build one in a legal way but he just he already had a small one built and he knew that it worked because he would throw a screw into it and the screw would reappear somewhere else uh, a half a second later. So he was very advanced oh, wow. on his technologies. He was very advanced on all his technologies. And um, he, he knew what it took. He just needed the equipment. He needed bigger equipment. So... Coast to Coast helped him, helped him raise money to build a three megawatt literal time machine, okay? Wow. Yes, that he did. He then was on Coast to Coast a year later um, after serving time for the stolen Transformers before he was, you know, given uh -oh. the money. Before he was given the money. And um, he... He then, okay, um, when he was on Coast to Coast a year later in 1996, he was a month away from having this down pat, okay? So he, he had many successful experiments with inanimate objects and other things. And um, he was ready and he knew he was going to be the subject. And when asked, what would you bring with you um, to go through this vortex that you're creating? Um, he responded, only my cell phone. Well, it is reported that from then on, 1997 on, no one ever heard from him again. And then somebody called into Coast to Coast saying there's a report in the 1930s of a body that looked like Mark, Mike Markham, that was washed up into a tube and had oh. a metal and plastic parts near him of some sort of device that can now be identified as a cell phone. What? Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. So that's where everybody left off on. Um, I just retold the story for anybody that has not heard the story yet. And if you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Um, and Tommy, if you have any questions, please ask me after this. But now I'm about to get into 
the part of the story nobody except for Art Bell seems to be revealing. So I was really curious about this and I did a lot of further research and I found a recording between Mike Markham and Art Bell on another coast to coast from 2015. In fact, correction, it wasn't coast to coast. At that point, I think Art Bell had already retired from there. It was called, it was on Periscope and it's called Midnight in the Desert. I listened to all three hours of this. So here's what happened. Here's where the story has continued since everybody else has left off. Okay, because many TikTokers and et cetera are covering the story and they leave it where you just heard. Now I'm getting into it. So apparently Mike Markham actually did many, many, many experiments with um, inanimate objects, uh, guinea pigs and hamsters um, that would, a lot of them would be never seen again. Um, but a lot of them would be uh, when he put them through the portal of this machine that he was 50 feet tall, um, 35 feet off the ground, um, and 17 feet wide, three megawatts. Jesus. Yes, a huge voltage. Um, they would appear either east or west, and they would appear when the one the ones that he found were alive and well. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now he doesn't know. You know, it it, it it's it's some. Oh, a lot of them would be like 50 to 100. 50 meters to the east or the west. Okay. Huh. So 1998, he finally decides he's making the jump into this time machine. Okay. And he put in enough voltage so that he wouldn't fall to the ground because if he fell to the ground, he could die because he's 35 feet up in the air. Like if it didn't right. work, he'd die anyway, you know? So he got up there and it's, he thought about it for a minute, but he knew if he thought about it much longer that he wouldn't do it. So he jumped through. Okay. And he said in quotes, he felt like he was hit by a flashbang. Okay. okay. All right. He wakes up in the middle of a field. Okay. He later finds out it's 800 miles away from the original machine. He wakes up in the middle of the field. Um, let me check my facts. I think it was in uh, Idaho. Let me see something. He did over 200 tests with the objects prior to this. Um, yes, he wakes up 800 miles east. He went from Kansas to Fairfield, Ohio. He just kept walking until he eventually saw a road and somehow made his way to a homeless shelter. It took him a while to remember his name. And eventually he learns it's the year 2000. So when he, okay. jumped, yeah, when he jumped through the time machine, it was 1998. And then he felt like he was getting banged up for like not even an hour. And then he wakes up in the middle of a field, 800 miles east in the year 2000. Okay. That's kind of crazy. Not only did he make a time machine, but he also made a teleporter. Yeah, I don't think that was in the plan. So. So basically, yeah, he used three megawatts, installed a rotating magnetic field in this machine, similar, similar to those used in the US military's Philadelphia experiment. Vortex was big enough for a man to walk into. Um, yeah, so then, yeah, this recording was recorded 2015, September 4th, okay? Art Bell keeps saying it's 20 years. It's 20 years after our original recordings, but Mike keeps saying it's 18, 
18 years for him because he missed out on two years of his life. Okay. So basically he had to raise, like he had to like get temporary jobs in order to even afford to get back to where he's from. Um, remember, I always said that. I was always like, what are they going to eat? I mean, with what money, you know? So he gets back to where he's from. There is no time machine there anymore. There's a new tenant in the warehouse that he was originally renting for it. Um, no, no scraps of the time machine. Uh, let's see what else there is about this. I'm wondering, I'm like, I guess I'll hold off until the end, but it's like, there's so many questions. Oh yeah, I know, I got you there, man. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So at the, her, the, his first interviews with Art Bell, he was like 20, you know what I mean? Now, um, Art Bell's like, now you're like 42. But according to Mike, he's 40 because he lost out on two years, you know. Um, uh -huh. He didn't age at all those two years. Um, and uh -huh. it's interesting. He actually claims what Joe Rogan's been getting at, um, which is that you can't go back to a date prior to building the machine. Um, and, yeah, he basically, in order to go back, he would need the, the machine on the whole time to be yeah, able to yeah. come through again and like i don't yeah there's a lot of questions going on um and then uh yeah he'd have to raise money to do it all over again and he he barely has a sketch of what happened prior and um you know he i don't know if he really wants to do it again and Art Bell's telling him to write a book. He's like, I was never good at writing. He seemed a little frazzled by the whole thing, to be honest. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. Two years into the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, but even like later, later. So, um, so yeah. So, guys, where most people left off the story, he was never heard from again. Is he the guy from 1930s that sh washed up? on the shore in a tube with a cell phone, according to the rest of what I told you, not yet. However, I that could be a time traveler who washed up in the 30s with a cell phone. Um, it might not necessarily be him in the future, but it also could be if this guy gives it a go again. If this guy is telling the truth, he actually created a time travel machine from scratch from his own human mind that actually worked and jetted him two years into the future. Now, if he could do that, imagine the technology we don't know about. Uh, I mean, you guys can do your own research, but way beyond that. Um, so, you know, and this is with the technology he only knew of in 1998. So yeah, what do you got there, Tommy? Yeah, my, like, so many questions. One, Apparently, he can't control when the hell he goes anywhere. Two, maybe not a teleporter. Maybe it has to do with the, the act of the Earth moving through that time. And that's why he's 800 miles away, because it's just moved. Like, from you're just in the spot that you're in, and the Earth moves around you, and you're, you just stop where you, it shuts you off, or it kicks you out. Yes, yes, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking as well. And he did say that Earth's magnetic field is what kept him towards um, towards Earth. And also that's why he believes the objects or animals or him are going east or west and not north and yeah. south. Also, it's like, why? I mean, he could easily find, if the, the machine was there two years ago, he can find where it, maybe they stored it somewhere or if they broke it apart, it's still his property and he still has, should have his identification and everything saying, listen, this is mine. And he could get it back without having to raise money again. But it's like two years. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a science. Like I'm not a physicist so or anything. So. Uh, like, I'm trying to figure out what would be the reasoning for just that. 
maybe you ran out of energy or maybe it just you just fell out of a vortex of where it would endlessly go well think about it could you make one that even time travels you 10 minutes yes oh, i'm sorry <laughs> you weren't expecting that were you no, uh, no. Actually, and that's why i drink is that juice you drink juice juice yes i love juice as well juice um so i love starting jokes you can't finish um no terrible so jokes but um yeah oh, you, man oh, you can create a time machine that transforms you 10 minutes no i wish i could okay. um you said yes um yeah, I no. think theoretically that could be a tv or a computer or any device because you know theoretically you wake up you're like oh no 10 minutes passed by or 10 hours but okay one question at a time um the first one you mentioned was you said he he can go anywhere um no he no, no 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 mm -hmm. i'm sorry i'm sorry to cut you off uh no I'm, I'm saying he couldn't he built a time machine without like point of exit or either future or past so i was wondering i'm like why would you why would you risk that well i think i think he was risking it all you know and but but yeah he did say for any of those who are wondering um you can't pinpoint when you're going it's just gonna at least the technology he came up with as far as he went he can't pinpoint when you're going um and he only came up with stuff that puts you into the future. And he said, in order to go back, um, you'd have to have it still on. And that takes a lot of power, um, even more power that, I mean, it took him so much power to even do that. Um, so yeah, I know your question is only two years, but it's like, can we really create anything that does 10 minutes? I mean, my God, it's crazy if you can even create anything that does one minute into the future. You know what I'm saying? Like, so two years is pretty, if it's legit, pretty huge um but okay so the other question you had regarding his stuff that's what everybody seemed to call in about during that and uh first he didn't have any identification on him he took nothing metallic with him he um he couldn't take anything metallic with him um oh, so he said he had a cell phone right um so he didn't take it no it was a joke apparently um so he didn't take anything metallic with him he eventually saved up to get another ID once he remembered his social. Um, but he didn't seem interested in getting the stuff back. I, I get it. To be honest, I know it sounds crazy, but I get it. It's like he's so devastated by the fact that it's not there and so confuzzled by the whole experience. Like, I guess he like people don't factor in what it really does to you when you time travel. Like, it jostles you all up in the brain and stuff that, like, he must have just been wiped out. You know what I mean? Like he's just like, oh, like that took that took all of his energy for how many years? And then it's just gone. Like it's devastating. I get it. You don't even want to like start over. It's like, and then you couldn't find any of the people that donated. You can't find any of the people that were there. I mean, he must be exhausted, you know? There's another question. It's like, did he was there anybody there to witness him go into it? So that's or was it just part. another I'm gonna do it on my own. From what I'm gathering, there were. And I'm oh, wondering really? why they didn't say anything, you know? Or record it. It's 2019. We had cameras. Why doesn't anybody ever record anything? Supposedly, actually, it was um 1998 when the successful launch happened. But apparently there were videos prior to that and during that that are now gone. Of course. Uh -huh. Yeah, he I don't wanna discredit him. I have my own kind of opinion on this that I'm not sure if I really want to share here. But here's my question. What did your family say? Like, did your family believe you when you went back and like just showed up two years later and was like time travel, like like, like what? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry, my family <laughs> would either be like, or like, 
Oh. Sure, what's Christina? Sure. No, they would, I don't think like they'd be like that, but they'd be annoyed. They'd be like, oh. yeah, and they and they they they'd either be like annoyed or annoyed and somehow blaming me for everything that's happened in the past two years, even though I haven't been around. They'd be like, and and you ruined his vacation, and you know, like it's, I could come back without limbs and be like, I didn't mean it, and they would just be like. To the garbage with it all like nah. <laughs> I'll be like, do you even know me? And they'd be like, no. Well, but I'm saying, I mean, like, what was his family like? Supposedly they filed a missing persons report that can't be found. Um, the news was on this when he disappeared. Art Bell got the news on it. <laughs> yeah, but just too uh, it's like uh, I mean, I get it, there's no but there's too much against it. I mean, at least you're lucky too. You're, my family would immediately be like, oh, he must be dead. Let's have a funeral. Yay, funeral. It's like, oh, come on. Well, he. <laughs> I'll just he, come back and be like, zombie. I'm a zombie. Sorry, one time machine. I'm a zombie. Yeah. So. Yeah, maybe they'd be like, well, that's more believable. Um, But yeah, he, the, the, his family apparently, um, just assumed he fried himself in some way or another and but didn't create like a get the death certificate <laughs> and they still haven't found anybody that was there with him to collaborate collaborate whatever I can't say the word right now i'm sorry guys corroborate there we go the fact that he jumped through um no sorry i just had a running joke in my head that i'm not saying it out loud <laughs> That's disappointing. No, you know, um, you know, you and I, Tommy. I was like, I wish I could have time machine, go back and have a different co-host right now. I'm just, jo I'm just joshing you, Tommy. Just joshing. It's okay. I'm gonna say the worst things to you when we're finished. <laughs> oh, I know it, <laughs> dude. Half of the morning to you. Cheers, you. <laughs> Uh, we have yet to release that anger management uh, video that we've done. Mm. Mm. It's true. Uh, but yeah, so what is this guy up to today? Do you know? The... Um, he might be homeless in Hawaii. Oh, well, I mean, if you're homeless in Hawaii, are you really homeless? That's pretty mm. awesome. Mm. I have an opinion on this. Um. I don't know if I want to share it. As well. Um, okay, so so here's okay, here's the thing. The main point of this video, guys, is to share with you the Mike Markham story and to then share with you the whole other half that is legit that you can look up from Art Bell from 2015 from Midnight in the Desert. Um on Periscope um, and YouTube. Um, I don't know if I wanna give my opinion. I don't wanna discredit anybody. If this is true, oh my God, amazing. And I hope he contacts soulsbyuniversity at gmail.com to be on the show, that would be amazing. Um, here's my personal opinion. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. We all give a lot of credit to Art Bell. I think Art Bell was honestly concerned with this man, if he was dead or alive. I think once he found out he was alive, he, d he did care for him, it sounds like, and he did want him on the show. Um, so everybody knew this man's side of the story, you know? Um, Art Bell says he believes this happened, but I think he's more being really open because I think the guy may have been a little defensive after what happened. He probably faced a lot of ridicule. Listen, if he is telling the truth and he faced a lot of ridicule, I feel really bad for him. I think this is what may have honestly happened. And I'm not, if this is the case and you're watching, Mike, this doesn't mean you're a bad guy and you're still welcome on the channel. Um, I think he, he, from what I'm gathering, he didn't want the fame at all. He didn't realize what that meant when he, when he gave, he gave out his number on the first coast to coast episode he was interviewed on. And um, he was sort of overwhelmed with the publicity and the phone calls and stuff like that. And I think it was good because they funded him making this time machine. However, 
Then he worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and worked on it. Because now he has to with all this funding. I think if it didn't work after a while, he may have gotten so exhausted and the pressure on him and everything for years and years and years and ended up not working. And maybe he just knew at that point he went as far as he can go. I think he just sort of needed a break and went to Hawaii or something. You know what I mean? Like, and he just wanted to get off the face. He wanted to not like be in public anymore. He wanted to not be doing this anymore. And yet he felt responsible with all this donation money. He just had to escape. That's what I think happened. And um, that's what I honestly feel. And not just because of the facts, because of the three hours I listened to, certain people asking him certain questions and the way he would pause or not want to do it again. Yeah, that could be because he was exhausted or didn't think he got out of it what he wanted in the first time. But I, I honestly think um, there's a little more to it. You know, like, 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 um, in, in the beginning of it, like he mentioned that he, after being in the homeless shelter for a few days, he went to the DMV and got an ID, um, through his social security number. Well, you'd have to prove that that's your social security number. And also where's the money coming from so quickly, you know, um, I don't, well, they have little loopholes. And all he has to do is show his social security number if he already had the, if he had a previous license, they can pull up his picture and, sh and see it. And so there you go. That's one thing. Oh, the wow. second thing, the, mo the money, I don't know, maybe he did some stuff for money. Who knows? People do some crazy stuff for money. <laughs> no, yeah. All right. uh, so he could have got, he could have got the money panhandling or something like that over time no but he that's within, how... within days of being at the homeless shelter he got another idea well maybe he got a loan from someone or something like that you never know it, it could have been much it could have been like what 20 bucks or 20, 50 bucks or something like that i'm also hey and i'm not saying i'm not saying he didn't or did i would love to believe he did um i would love to have him on the show um no matter which way he's going to tell us you know i i want him to tell us what he you know what he wants and hopefully that's the truth um i wonder did, when he went to the homeless shelter did he say sorry i just a time travel <laughs> like, right? like i think he was really disoriented for a few years okay yeah, I, wasn't his memory gone? I yeah honestly i think he wanted to forget everything for a while he may have went off and lived off the grid for a while, maybe done some stuff, you know what I mean? Like, and just wanted to forget it and then didn't know how to come back and face everyone, you know? Yeah. Plus, if you go to a homeless shelter, I'm sure there's more than one time travel. <laughs> like, you're going to find a slew of different people. Um, you have a point. You have a point. Maybe things pressure just got too much for him, and he's like, "Deuces, I'm out of here for a while." Then why would he come back? Two years? It's like, I don't think that's enough. that doesn't feel like enough to the man. Well, he actually only resurfaced mostly in 2015 on this Art Bell interview, um, because mo every other source other than me and Art Bell right now are reporting, and then he was never heard from again. After 1997, is he the guy that watched oh. the 1930s? So 17 years he stayed hidden. Wow. Um, well, 17 years, I think he, yeah, I think he stayed hidden. However, um, two years is when he says he missed due to time traveling. And he says there's no, there's no, no mark anywhere of him. No social security mark or anything. Now, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true because he may have, that's more, he's very recognizable. Um, by the way, we have nine minutes left. <laughs> so oh, nine minutes or less, we got to wrap up. Um, but um, he's, 
you know, you would think someone would come out by now to, there's something that come out by now between those two years that he was alive or something. So he, he might be telling the truth. I hope he's telling the truth. True. I mean, they also probably could have declared him dead. And that's why I was a hard time with all the social security number and everything. Because once that's done, they clear it. Clear um, it. He, never, he never had a hard time with that. So I don't know where you're getting that from. Oh, I thought that's what you just said. I'm sorry. No, um, no. For two years, there was not one trace of him. Like nowhere. No, nothing. Yeah, but that happens. A, that's not that's not rare. That happens a lot to a lot of people who just want to disappear. That's what I want to do. Um, but oh, that'd be hilarious. Imagine I do that. I'm going to build a time machine, everybody. See you in 15 years. <laughs> uh yeah, man, it, it, you, you're probably right, and you probably, I would like to believe that he built a time machine, because, I mean, the time machine, some, some time travel stories that we hear is like, it's so clean, and this doesn't sound clean, and that's probably because that's that's how it actually is. It's like, what, what, got thrown into two years, it's like, what the, what the hell, I can't, and it's probably how it sh really is. I yeah. like to believe it's true. I do. I, I actually want to believe this one is true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just so you know, guys, um, he didn't say, interestingly enough, you know, because we want to know your opinions below. And you know what? I kind of want to believe it's true, too. I just wanted to give you both sides of what could have been. But um, it's not. So he didn't appear exactly two years later in the middle of the field. It was two years, two months, and some odd weeks or days, he said. So that's interesting. Pretty scrappy, like um, you said. It wasn't an exact clean cut, you know? Yeah. Even two seconds into the future or past is still some time. It's still time travel. So that's that's amazing. I mean, I really, I really hope it's true. And I hope this guy tries to redo his experiment and or maybe somebody find the people that were there and get the camera footage or something so people set camera people everything you do set up a camera your phone is a camera literally just I break it out as soon as you see like, something crazy i think he's just like over it you know wow. it's time travel how can you be over well unless unless the government stepped in is like hey shut your mouth you you, you and your family are going to be dead shut your mouth and he's like all right <laughs> okay so i don't know how true this is but someone did ask him Hey, did the government knock on your door? Did DARPA knock on your door? And um, he actually said no. No. Although you got to remember, he didn't really have a consistent door to knock on. Um, oh, my God, my dog just scared me. Um, you know, what was I going to say about this? Um, I mean, someone brought up a good point. I kind of thought, all right, you know what? I don't think they would either um, because they didn't. he didn't get nearly as far as probably they do. Um, so why bother knocking on his door? You know what I mean? Like, he, like uh, also, if they did, it's like he wanted to stay private anyway. Also, if they did, would he say anything? Maybe not. Maybe he's too scared to say anything, which would make sense. Also, maybe they didn't. That's where he went for two years. Um, also, someone's like, why didn't they offer you a job if you're this good at this kind of stuff? Um, and he said, that's a good question. I think he's had problems getting jobs since then, to be honest. <laughs> Which is oh, interesting. Okay. So he's this guy is very <laughs> intelligent. You <Is> see? <he laughs> it's like, it's a cardboard box. Time for my time machine. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's just like all right we made a mistake donating to this you know guy what, though? you know what though i bet he is really intelligent and intelligent enough to even start doing this kind of thing and and to have kind of gotten as far as he got i do believe that but i don't believe the american minds are open enough to believe that in like a job application or what? in thing anything like that you know, could you imagine, like, what'd you do this weekend? Like, you're at the office, like, oh, yeah, I built a time machine. Like, 
I don't know, like, it's just, it just doesn't seem like the country that's like giving you credit for that. Yeah. I would brag about that constantly. Like, hey, what's up, girl? I built a time machine. What? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I can. Do you get... remember the eighties? I remember the eighties. I was there yesterday. Ooh, I want to travel <laughs> in your time machine. Maybe yeah. I can give you some of my. Uh... <laughs> Whatever happens back in time happens back in time. <laughs> I come back in the future, I'm like, oh my god, what have I done? Dude, <laughs> so you're much part of my future. <laughs> So much drug and cocaine. <laughs> you bring me the sum of the past, I give you some of my future. Oh, nice. Well, anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> wait, we're worried. We have like three minutes before this kicks us off. Um, All right. So this guy might be a fraud. Who knows? I hope he's not. He might uh, be a what? A fraud. I hope not. I don't think so. I think he has a lot of brains. I think it was misdirected. I think he got exposed in it, like he felt exposed. I think he was under, you know, I think, I think under the right circumstances, he could really flourish. I feel bad. I do. I feel bad for him. Um, I don't want to, Mike, if you're watching this, I don't mean it in any sort of insulting way. Even if he, even if what I guessed is true, which is probably the worst case scenario, it's okay. It's okay. Please come on the show. You're still great. You know, you're still talented. You're still great. You're still a human. That's what matters. Um, oh, God, two minutes. But, God, what were we getting at before you did that? Um, uh, I don't know. Thank you for watching. Everybody. Oh, excuse oh, you. Okay. Sorry. Um, ironically, ironically, um, as, as Tommy said, he would brag about building a time machine. Um, yes. Back in my sorority days, <laughs> when we were asked yeah. to do all sorts <laughs> interesting stuff i was ironically in charge of building a time machine now i had i was so disheveled from no sleep etc in our fun activities and um, we were all given different activities I, I don't know where this came up with this activity for me i've never heard of it since i didn't know what was real or not I obviously just put a bunch of cardboard together and made a damn time machine and hope that it worked for my own sake, to be honest. But that's all we got for today, guys. Obviously, I'm not claiming to have built a real time machine, um, although we could play with metaphors all day. Um, all right. Unfortunately, Zoom is kicking us off. Um, don't forget, if you got anything out of the story, um, again, me and only our bell are putting the real truth out there about the rest of this. Um, please like. Um, to support our content, subscribe so we can see you again, and uh, share to enlighten others of this amazing news. Gotta go, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>